Good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on day trading and possible day trading strategies. Today's class is sponsored by CMS Traders, Capital Markets Trader, one of the world's leading CFD and Forex providers. Now, because they are a regulated provider, I'm required to give you a risk warning, so let me read that and get that in the way. Trading Forex and CFDs and spread bets on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more than your initial deposit and could be required to deposit additional funds. Please ensure you fully understand the risks and take care to manage your exposure. Now, if you want, while we're talking tonight in our class, you can go to www.cmstrader.com and open a demo account by simply logging, going to their platform and just click the sell or the buy button. They'll ask you three lines of detail, your email address or your password, and you will have a demo account and you can actually start trying out some of these strategies uh, while we're talking without risking any money. There's no credit cards, no deposit, no anything required. But go over and take a look at their platform. So go to www.cmstrader.com. If you can't access if you can't access it or it says blocked, it means that you're coming from a country that they are not regulated in and they do not provide trading services where they are not regulated. Now, CMS Trader is one of the world's leading providers. There is no dealer intervention on your trades. There's no conflict of interest between the broker and the trader. And they also have an extensive education program to help you learn and understand the markets to the best degree possible. Now, they offer all kinds of trading accounts for their mini, their silver, their gold. You can also trade in micro lots or standard lots. They offer you free daily signals. You have unlimited access to all of their different trading platforms. You get free daily market updates and live technical analysis. And you have a multilingual customer support manager who's there to help you whenever you need assistance. So if you want, go to www.cmstrader.com and give them a shot. Go take a look at their wide range of instruments. They offer a very extensive list of stocks, commodities, indices, as well as currencies. You can also use their watch, copy, and profit um, a platform which allows you to watch all of their best traders and you can copy their trade and, and do it along you know with no experience necessary and you just simply copy with one click whatever their best traders are doing now you can also learn how to become an independent trader with CMS trader they offer you a live range of on-demand videos they have one-on-one -on -one sessions with financial experts. They offer you a wide range of ebooks, just about everything you could possibly use to educate yourself. Now, today's class is all about day trading. And before you all type in questions and ask me the same questions over and over again, let me listen very closely and let me get them out of the way. This class is being recorded. It will be available in about 24 or 48 hours by using the same link you came to tonight's class. Okay. Also, tonight we're not here to discuss your personal questions about how to day trade because we have, I think we're expecting almost a thousand people. And so if I'm there to answer all of your little ins and out questions, we'll never finish the class. So please listen very carefully because most likely we're going to go over or I'm going to say exactly what you're asking me. So just listen to what I'm saying, and then at the end, if you still have a question, I'll try to entertain it, okay? Now, I see a lot of people who make money consistently by day trading. I also see a whole bunch of newbies losing a lot of money trying to be day traders. Because day trading takes effort. It's not as simple as it seems. You know. There were all these fads with people on TV saying they're becoming millionaires overnight, you know, and all of this stuff. But they bear no resemblance. The people that are successful bear no resemblance to secretaries, you car salesmen, dentists, who showed up on the cover of Forbes and Fortune in the late 90s boasting their four-hour workdays, trading on the beach in the Bahamas, and giving up their day jobs to cash in while they're pulling out market money out of the market every day and driving Rolls Royces. 
you know, that's a bunch of BS. Okay, so don't fall for that plot. Because day trading does take hard work. But if you employ and develop your strategies, you put the effort into it, you can be successful. No, no, the successful day traders I know have been doing it for years. And that's what it takes. It takes years of experience. They all trade through retail brokers that everyone has access to. And some of them do it even with a little, as little as $5,000 in their account. But they're not looking. Day trading doesn't equal rich. Okay. When you decide you want to get rich and you think you're going to do it day trading and by next year you'll be on vacation in the Bahamas, it's not going to happen. But you can slowly, steadily make good money. You can increase your account size. You can increase your abilities and your knowledge. And slowly over time, become a good, successful day trader. But the fact is, unless you have lots of money to invest and lots of risk potential, the reward is equal to how much money you have and how much risk you have. Now, if you want to make... 10 or 20%, 30%, 40% on your small and beginning investment and put it away each month, that's quite possible. But please remember, your risk is always the most important thing you should be looking at. Okay, not your profits. Because if you limit your risk, your profits will fall in place. So day trading is not an investment style or a philosophy. It is a level of financial mastery that most will never achieve, but millions desire. Trust me, dig into the deepest, darkest fantasy of even the most hardcore value trader, and you will find someone who wishes they could be a successful day trader. Why? Day trading is exciting. Investing you know, or looking for a stock that has you know, long-term value that's going to go up slowly over the next few years. Well, the next few years when it goes up and you make money, it can, be, it can be good, but it doesn't get, make your heart beat. So day traders or day trading is very exciting because you get almost immediate results. So anything that requires focus, drive, discipline, a specific skill set, and yes, even a bit of luck is hard to do successfully. But because the vast majority can't do it doesn't mean it can't be done. Nor does it mean it shouldn't be attempted as long as you do it the right way. Now, I'll be very honest with you. In the early 1980s, in those days, we, we, we had day trading, but it was slightly different because we didn't have online trading. We didn't have home computers. We didn't have PCs. And we actually went and sat in a pit in a broker's office watching ticker tapes, and all of our trades were done through the brokers. But I was basically a day trader. In 1981, 1982, 1983, I had more money than I knew what to do with. I was spending it as fast as you could imagine. Yeah, I was like one of those commercials. By 1984, I was dead broke. Yeah, true fact. Because what happened was no matter what, how I employed all of these things, the luck turned slightly against me. So a trade I made in 81 was completely, you know, and shouldn't have even been successful, was completely successful. I made that same trade in 83 and 84. Believe me, I lost more than I... I could imagine, and then I kept chasing my profits because I was not looking at my risk because I was more concerned with covering my bills because now I was on a losing streak instead of a winning streak. So I learned at that point that you have to leave your emotion home. You have to only trade what you can afford, and you can't depend on that money coming out of that account to pay your bills next month, and no matter what. You know, you say, you know, what you want to do is, I could have paid my bills with my earnings. But the fact is, I've ramped up my lifestyle after three years of making all this money and didn't pay attention. And this is what we did the wrong way. But that was 40 years ago. Now I don't day trade anymore either. But I'm a short-term trader, and I'm a swing trader, and I do all right. But at the end of the day, participating in the markets is only about one thing, making money. And you should try to make money in the way that is not only the easiest, but historically has the highest chance of success. But life is more complex than the markets, and one compelling point of life is the desire to achieve that which cannot be 
which, which most cannot, and which sets you apart from the rest. Becoming a successful day trader will bring you rewards that far surpass the majority of the market participants, but it is not without risk. And believe me, in this class tonight, I'm going to keep telling you all about risk because it's one of the hardest things for a trader to accept. And that is the biggest decision when you're making a trade is what is the risk reward ratio and can I afford that risk? If you can't afford that risk or in order to limit your risk, you've got to put your stop loss too close, then you shouldn't be making that trade. And that should be your first signal. If you follow a good risk reward money management philosophy, that will keep you out of getting in trouble. Now, the thing about day trading, it can be modeled around a person's current life. However, day trading it from home is also one of the most capital intensive arenas. Now, it depends on what market you want to day trade. Because I was, I was trading in agriculturals. That was a far different world. But today, after that, day trading became very popular in the stock market. And this is where people were telling you they were getting rich. These cheap, low price stocks that they were buying that were soaring through the market, penny stocks, God knows how many stories we've seen out there. Today, you'll find that CFD, the CFD market is about the best place to day trade. Why? It's not capital intensive because the minimum entry requirement for a stock trader who is designated by his broker as a day trader is large. And this amount must be maintained at all times. If a trader's account falls below the minimum, he or she will not be permitted to day trade until minimum equity levels are restored, either by depositing cash or securities. But there are other markets to day trade, including Forex and CFDs. Now, in the CFD market, you can buy that same stock virtually at the same price using a much higher leverage and get out of it just as quickly, but the equity that's required to get into that trade is a lot lower. So potential traders need to be aware of other markets that require less capital and have lower barrier entries. The Forex market or currency market offers such an alternative. Accounts can be open with as little as $100, and with leverage, a large amount of capital can be controlled with this small amount. But please don't make the mistake. $100 in account and at Forex, even with leverage, it is now controlled by the regulators, and if you're somewhere that you're getting in Forex 50 to 1 or 100 to 1, that means you're only getting in with $100, a small investment, because when a good solid currency only moves in pips, that's hundreds of a point. So even if you're sitting with, with 10,000 euros, and the euro goes up 10 pips, yes, you made $100, and you had an account for $100, so you made 100%, but you're not really making enough to increase your account and day trading, where CFDs, on the other hand, allow you to trade in stocks or commodities or indices, which will allow you to magnify your profits for smaller amounts. So the contract for difference market has also expanded. A CFD is an electronic agreement between two parties that involve no ownership of the underlying asset. This allows for gains to, the, to be captured for a fraction of the cost. As with the Forex market, the CFD market provides high leverage, meaning smaller amounts of capital are needed to enter the market. The stock market can also be traded using a CFD. While the stock is never owned, the contract allows for profits and losses to be reaped from speculating on the underlying stocks and indices by mirroring its movement. So if you're going to day trade Apple, or if you had sold Amazon yesterday when it reached its, its peak and if you know and, and then it fell, I mean, did you see Jeff Bezos two days ago pushed past Bill Gates to become the richest man in the world? And then yesterday lost, I think it was six billion dollars. But it was only numbers on a board because Amazon soared up and then Amazon it, it stayed up just as high, but it came down a little bit lower than its peak. But, you know, when you're at $90 billion, who the hell cares? But you could have traded that same stock without owning Amazon. You could have traded it with a CFD. And all you would have to do is say, okay, I want 100 shares or 500 shares or 1,000 shares of Amazon. And Amazon's trading at hypothetically 150. And 1,000 shares would be what? 
150 times 1,000 or 100, and can I do that multiplication, $150,000, and probably for $1,500 you could have tied that up, and you could have made a lot of money. Now, higher leverage does mean higher risk, but if a trader does not have a large amount of capital, this market can be entered with lower barriers. Educating your oneself on the risk involved and building a strong trading plan are absolute must for partaking in any trading activity. But when you're trading highly leveraged, it becomes paramount. Now, we mentioned in here trading plan. Most of you guys, unfortunately, don't know the difference between a trading strategy and a trading plan. And shortly, we're going to go over and talk about some day trading strategies. But a trading plan has very little to do with your strategy. A trading plan is like your Bible. It's your guide. It's, your, it's what keeps you from doing what I did in the 80s. It can be as elaborate as you want, but it's your set of rules that you live by. Now, for instance, you could say, I will only make, or I will make no more than five trades a week. Or, I will stop trading after I've executed 10 trades for the week and take a day off with no trading. I will also completely evaluate every one of my trades within an hour at the close and decide how I did, why I did it, if it did exactly what I was going to do. Or you can say I only trade on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Or I only trade between 9 and 12. You could say Tuesday and Thursday when I come home from work, I do analysis and I only execute trades on Wednesday. You find Wednesdays are a very good day for you. This is in your trading plan because it keeps you on the straight and narrow. You could say, I take off the fourth week of every month. You also incorporate in there your risk management. How much is the maximum you will ever put into a trade? What is the minimum and the maximum risk reward ratio you'll take? If you've had four losing trades in a row, it might say, I stopped trading for 72 hours. This is what goes in there. Now, part of that goes in there is then the market evaluation, not the strategy. What is the market looking like now? Okay, especially if you're going to day trade, you're very concerned with what is the market looking like now. You could say, look at that. It's a very volatile market. Or you can say overall that it's a risk-off market, a risk-off market. Or the U.S. dollar is easing everywhere. Well, automatically that tells you what strategies you might be using or what assets you might. Your, your trading plan also incorporates what assets you will trade. Not what you're going to trade today. Not what you're going to make a trade. I will only trade crude oil, Brent oil, gold, the euro, U.S. dollar, and wheat. Or I'll only trade the Japanese yen and its crosses. Because, unfortunately, too many people out there think they can be a master of all. But you're not. You become a jack of all trades, and you don't become a master of any. And you start jumping all over the place. And you start saying, ah, when this one gives me this signal, that one gives me this signal, that one gives me that signal, I'll make this trade. You don't care what asset it is. It doesn't work that way. Better off becoming an expert in a couple assets. Because you also can't track down that many. You know, you could say, I'm only going to look at tech stocks. Or I'm only going to trade this or that. This is up to you to build your trading plan. But then once you've evaluated everything and you've evaluated the market, okay, do I have a volatile market? Again, do I have a risk off? Do I have geopolitical things happening around the world that, are, that might send the market in turmoil? Do I have a major election coming up? All of this is done about. Then once you've got that, then you say, okay, for a market like this, I know that trading plan X, Y, and Z, or trading strategy X, Y, and Z works very well in a consolidating market. I know X, Y, Z works extremely well in a volatile market. Then you start employing that strategy you use. But you're also saying there every time the strategy fails, I go back test it for a month and demo accounts to make sure it's still adequate. Some strategies just die out. Some can be very good in certain markets and then for some reason have no life in them left. And this is part of your trading plan. Okay. Now, once you started building your trading plan, 
Okay, and your trading plan could also be incorporating knowledge and education. You know, I'm going to go read one article on Bollinger Bands today. I'm going to spend an hour each day reading something about the markets, or testing, or back testing, or trying to trade something on a demo strategy, or refine my strategy on a demo account. You could also determine how much of your profits you're going to leave in the account. Do you leave everything in the account, or do you pull out 50% of your profits and put it away in your retirement account? Okay, these are prerequisites. Okay, then we come to your strategy. A trader needs an edge over the rest of the market. There are several different strategies day traders use, including swing trading, arbitrage, trading news among them. These strategies are refined until they produce consistent, effective limit, effective limit losses. Okay. Now, tonight we're going to go over a couple of these strategies, but you're not going to learn them tonight. I'm not even here to teach them to you tonight. I'm here to give you some ideas for strategies because it would ta it's taken me years to build my own trading strategies. In one class, you're not going to learn anything. What you're going to do is have your eyes open to potential things that you might want to go out and learn and research or ones that work well that you might want to learn and start building and then start build, testing them on a demo platform and start refining them to make them your own. Because if I were to teach you an entire strategy, you'd lose your money. Because I can't teach you all the ins and outs and all the little things that are back in the recesses of my brain. I can't teach you how to feel the trade. Imagine, I don't know how old most of you are. I don't even know what the laws are in most countries. But when I was 16, actually when I was 15, we took driver's education in school. Okay. Once you finish driver's education, you could get your learner's permit, and it had to be beyond 15, and you could only drive with your parent, or with an adult. In those days, it was your parents. Okay. And I'd go out with my dad driving now and then, and we'd go to the school parking lot and try to you know, test the car. Okay, And then after that, I went and got my driver's license, and I took my test. Okay. I did fine. I passed it the first time around and everything else. And I remember taking that car the first time when my father said, okay, but I was only going down the street to the store. I remember how nervous I was. And I got there and got home. I was a kid. But then the following year, I bought my own car and I bought a stick shift. Well, it took a little while to learn, but everybody had taught me everything. I knew the rules, but you know what? The first couple weeks, I had to learn to upshift and downshift and how the gear sounded, because I had never driven a stick shift before. It got to the point, though, within six months, my ears could tell me what the engine was doing. My body and my feet could tell me when to shift the gears. And, you know, you'd be sitting there listening to a song on the radio, talking to your girlfriend next door, paying no attention, shift it up and down that car. When you're going up the hill and see a red light, you didn't think about it. Right? Your feet just kind of knew how to hold the brake and the clutch because it was yours. But when I was taught all that stuff, and even when I did the stuff with my father looking over my shoulder, I was concentrating so hard. And I got it right, but I never got the feel for it. I never got the little ins and outs. But after doing it on my own for a while, I had the ins and outs. So a profitable strategy is useless without discipline. Many day traders end up losing a lot of money because they fail to make trades that meet their own uh, criteria and they say plan the trade and trade the plan and the thing about day trading is it can happen so fast that you can get sucked in to the markets and forget what you're doing and having a plan will keep you on the straight and narrow so after the method of trading that best fits you have been decided, the next steps are crucial. If your trading from home is your main interest, then you must decide what markets you will trade based on the capital and the interest. You must make a comprehensive trading plan, which is also a business plan. Trading is now your business. And decide how you will operate as a trader. From there, explore different online brokers and compare what they offer. And that's one of the reasons I told you to go open a demo account, a CMS trader. Get to see what they're offering. Okay, because 
Trading is one thing. Most of the traders, most of the platforms offer you everything. It's having a, a web trader or web browser that you're comfortable with, having the right tools, getting the right tools, having you know, all the data fed, you having charts that you're very comfortable looking at. This is what's important, and that's one of the reasons you want to find a, because when you're doing regulated brokers, they're all virtually the same. It's what they offer on their platform, how their platform looks. I, I mean, I've gone to some platforms where, the, you know, they got so many colors and so many logos all over the place that I get dizzy. You know, it, I just don't feel comfortable using them. It's still basically the same thing. It's just too much stuff going on. I had a client just a couple weeks ago that asked me to look through his QA platform. And I said, to him, you know, you have social media going up and down the right-hand side. You have, you know, all the trades and everything going up and down the left-hand. I said, I can't even see what I'm doing because he forgot to put the little off and on button so you couldn't turn them off and on. You couldn't close them out. I said, you know, it's not comfortable. Uh, you know, so you have to look around for brokers. But then one of the reasons we recommended CMS is because they have a great trading platform. Their technology is great and their dynamic screens are great. But now it comes down to, it's all about strategy. And of course, risk management. And I'm not gonna leave you off the hook on risk management. Now, for day trading, there are several, I mean, there's not several, there are thousands of strategies. Four of the most popular, okay, are scalping, fading, daily pivot points, and momentum trading. Now, scalping is one of the most popular trading strategies. It involves selling almost immediately after a trade becomes profitable. The price target is whatever figure that translates into you've made money on this deal. Just as soon as the pips go in your favor, close it out, take that little bit of profit, making many, many, many trades. Fading involves shorting stocks after rapid moves upward. So, again, when we talked about uh, Amazon soaring up the other day after all their good earnings. Okay. You know it's going to peak back down, even if it's for a little while. You don't know how far it's going to go, but if it goes down a dollar and you got a thousand shares on, you made a thousand bucks. Okay. Then you have daily pivot points. This strategy involves profiting from a stock's daily volatility. And daily pivot points work just as well in Forex and commodities market. And they work extremely well with gold. Works very well with oil, actually. And this strategy involves profiting from an asset's daily volatility. This is done by attempting to buy at the low of the day and sell at the high of the day. So here is the target price. This is simply the next sign of reversal. And you do this by putting your pivot point and your lines of support and resistance and looking at the chart and see where that, 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 that asset has been going from the top and the bottom day, defining the bottom, defining the top, and then wait for it to touch that bottom again and sell it to go, buy it to go up, or wait for it to hit the highest level, that's to hit a couple times through the day, and shade it to go down. And then momentum. This strategy usually involves trading on news releases or finding some strong trend line moves supported by high volume. One type of momentum trader will buy on news releases and ride the trend until it exhibits signs of reversals. The other type will fade the price surge. Okay, so we're gonna look at some of these in a little bit more detail. So tonight we're going to look about a couple different strategies. So the first one we're going to look at is momentum day trading strategy. Now momentum is what day trading is all about. One of the first things I learned is that the only way to profit is by finding assets that are moving. You do not want to find congesting or consolidated markets. Or if the overall market is in a consolidating state. Okay. You don't want to, you know, that's one of the days to take off. Now, there's always some asset that's reacting to something. But if it's not in your list of assets, then you don't want to go search for it anyway. But, you know, if you use the economics count, you use the, the, you know, the earnings reports, you lose the headline, you can usually find something that's moving. The good news is that almost every single day there are assets that are moving 20 to 30%. And that, this is just a fact. The question is how do we find them before they make a big move? Before going any farther, let's step back for a moment and ask ourselves what we require from a momentum day trading strategy. First of all, we need to understand what, it, what is moving. Assets that are chopping around sideways are useless. So the first step for a trader is to find the ones that are moving. The price action associated with this event is almost always the cleanest. 
bull flags, and bull flags, if you don't know, are a pattern or, or a chart pattern that appears on your chart. It can also be described as a triangle, are my absolute favorite charting pattern. In fact, I like them so much, I've made entire pages dedicated to bull flags patterns. I also, we also have classes in chart, chart uh, patterns in trend trading. But this pattern is something we almost see every day in the markets, and it offers low-risk entries in strong investments. The hard part for BNE traders to find these patterns in real time. As a tr pattern trade, as a pattern-based trader, I look for patterns to support continued momentum, triangles, flags, head and shoulders, channels. Um, uh, what do we have? Also, um, my mind is blank. There's one more I want to. Um, a wedges. Okay. Now, with a bull flag pattern, my entry is the first candle to make a new high after a breakout. So to understand what a bull flag pattern is, it's a, just imagine it's a triangle. And when the triangles are condensing together, they're going to break out. So what we're looking for is the first new high of the breakout. So we can scan the asset squeezing up from the tall green candle in the bull flag. Okay. Now, the reverse is true in a downtrend in the opposite way. So you can see a red candle breaking down. When you see the candles breaking out and making new highs or new lows in breaking out from the bull flag, okay, or the bear flag, then you will have a entry point. The first green candle to make the new high after the pullback is my entry, with my stop at the low of the pullback. Typically, we'll see volume spike at the moment the candle makes a new high. So what you're watching is volume. When volume spikes up, that means all the other traders in the market aren't necessarily watching you, but they believe in that move. So that is that tens of thousands of retail traders are taking positions and sending in their buy orders. Okay. Now, I usually get a tight stop just below the first pullback. If the stop is further than 20 cents away, I may decide to stop out minus 20 cents and come back for a second try. The reason I use a 20 cent stop is because I always want to trade with a two to one profit loss ratio. In other words, if I risk 20 cents, it's because I have the potential to make 40 cents. If I risk 50 cents or more, it means I need to be able to make $1 to get the proper profit loss ratio to adjust the trade. If my stop loss and my estimated profit point and my entry point are not correct, I do not execute the trade. I try to avoid trades where I have to generate a large profit to justify the trade. Because in order to say I need a two to one risk loss ratio, it can say, okay, you can make that because you've got to put your stop loss down that far. But so I'm going to force it to make it have to be a huge trade to justify the trade. But that's erroneous. You're forcing the trade. It's much easier to treat success if I have a 20 cent stop and a 40 cent target or a $1 stop and a $2 target. Now this is in, in stocks, but it's the same philosophy, the same strategy, the same numbers in commodities or in, in um, Forex. Okay. When I'm trading, I try to balance my risk across all trades. The best way to calculate risk is to look at the distance from my entry point to my stop. If I have a 20 cent stop, then I want to make my maximum risk $500 or I'll take 2,500 shares, which is 2,500 shares times 20 cent risk or $500. So my biggest risk is $500 and therefore I'm only hoping that those shares go up 40 cents and if those shares go up 40 cents, guess what? I made $1,000. So if my loss was 50 cents, or five, my loss was five, potential loss could be $500, I need to say that that share price should be able to go up 40 cents. But if I'm trading a tiny little share, okay, that's not going to go anywhere. But also my stop loss, it all works out proportionately. Okay. 
but you don't want to force your risk reward ratios outside of the barrier. When it goes outside your standard two to one, if that's what you set, and most cases I set three to one, because I would much rather not trade than have higher risk. Okay. Now, exit indicators. First, I will sell half when I hit my profit. And this is very important. You have to decide in your trading plans, how will you exit the market? My idea is when I've made profit, I get out half of my position and I book that profit. If I'm risking $100 to make $200, so once I'm up $200, I sell half. I'm out of you know, half. Of, I've already put covered my trade and got some profit in my account. I then adjust my stop to my entry price on the balance of my position. So in other words, if I entered say, a share of Amazon at 100, I had put my stop loss at 99, and my take profit point was at 102. When that asset moved to 102, I sold half of it and put that profit in my account, and then I took my stop loss, which was at 99, and moved it to the 100. So even if the market reverses on its entirety, what happens? I get stopped out at my break-even point, and I have no loss on what's left in, and I already got half the profit in my account. So if I haven't already sold half, the first candle to close red in a exit indicator is an exit candle. Once I see a red candle, I just close out the rest of it and walk away. Okay, extension bars force me to begin locking in my profits before the inevitable reversal begins. Because the reason you want to stay in with less and less and keep moving up your stop loss is if that asset happens to continue its momentum, you can continue that profit. So if we had taken that Amazon, bought it at 100, put our stop loss at 99, it moved to 102, we sold half. Okay, so we had 1,000, we had 2,500 shares, now we have 1,250 shares. Okay. We've already booked our profit and moved our stop loss up to our entry level. So that means we can't lose any more money from what we have left in the market. But if something keeps pushing that, Amazon goes to 106, I don't want to be out of the market. So now when Amazon went to 106, I can keep moving my stuff and sell another half. Because I keep booking profit and I keep moving my stop loss, but I don't want to push myself out of the markets too early and not ride the entire ride up or down. So even if I ended up riding up with a quarter of my investment, I end up with a little bit of profit in my first half, a large amount of profit in my second, and either, so my third exit, either I break even because it hits my stop loss, but I, guess what? I move my stop loss up to 102. So even when it, it closes out, I still close out at $2 profit for each of the remaining, at that point I have 625 shares left. Okay. But this is a strategy you have to test and develop. It's finding the right momentum, determining where it go, enter that and keep moving. Because assets move up and down all day. As long as there's volatility, you can take that momentum and trade it going up and up or the reverse going down and down. So one of the smallest and most effective trading strategies in the world is simply trading price action signals from horizontal levels on chart. If you learn only one thing from this site or this class, it should be this, look for obvious price action patterns from key horizontal levels in the market. If you just stick to that formula, you have plenty of high probability trading opportunities over the course of one year. Don't overcomplicate the process for analyzing the market's charts or finding trades. The market will generate signals for you when it's ready. All you need to do is learn what those signals look like and where to look for them and that is all we want to learn in this lesson. Now, we're going to go talk about some other strategies, but I want to take you over to some charts and show you some ways that might be very easy for you that most traders don't even realize exist. Okay. Because these strategies are not new. So if we go over here, okay, and we're not going to look at this gold, but we're going to go over here to the euro, and I want to do momentum trading. Well, you can do all kinds of things to find it. But today, most charts, if you go up to indicators, you scroll down here, somebody's already done all the work for you. 
So we can just scroll down here to Momentum Strategy, click on it, and it's already put it on the charts. And see here we have our blues and our reds, and it's telling you here you have the Momentum Indicator trade up, here you have the Momentum Indicator trade down, and all you're doing is going to wait for it to pop up on the most recent bar while you're watching. And you'll sit back, and when it pops up there, you can trade it. Now, the nice thing about we're just looking at tra charts from TradingView.com. TradingView will allow you to test your strategy, and you can take this built-in strategy and start adjusting it right here. Okay, so you can set up your trading panel, you can set up your strategy, and you can see here all the clues of how, how successful they've been, and then you can follow them and just wait for it to appear on that asset when it comes up while you're watching for it to trade. Because you can't trade them when they're, they're an hour old. You need to see them pop up here on the chart. So if you simply put volume on the bottom of your charts, you have your momentum indicator, you actually have the beginnings of a momentum trading strategy. Because all you're doing is looking for a time period that has momentum, and then follow the rules of how to execute your trade. Look for the entry point, or put your stop loss, put your take profit point, and ride it out together. Okay. And again, you can test it and personalize it down here. Or you can use the one exists, but you can then adjust it by just clicking on here and get adjusted all you want to fit your own type of strategy. Make it your own. And then you can take this with a demo platform and start testing it completely. But this is actually testing it for you right here on each trade that you can, because you're not actually executing trades, but it's telling you what it does right here and what the percentages are. And you can use this screener and the strategy trader. Okay. And here's the editor. You can edit it. You can put your notes in here. It's a very nice, easy system. So let's go back over to the next strategy because we're running out of time actually. Tonight's this class is going longer than expected. Okay, so let's take you back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so key horizontal levels of support and resistance are areas or levels on a chart that prices make a strong move either up or down. Now remember, we were talking before, trading the tops and trading the bottoms. Okay, well, this is pivot point. Pivot point action. Okay. Now, again, we can go easily to the charts, and today the charts will just drop your pivot points on there. But look, we're going to look. The chart below is the daily gold chart, and it shows us a nice, clear example of a well-formed pin bar pattern that formed at a key horizontal level in the markets. Clearly, the 1170 was already in an important horizontal level. So we can see that price is coming down and touching this resistance line and bouncing off of it. When the pin bar broke below it and the close was higher, then we have a good solid level and we're looking for upward momentum. So you could have entered that trade, uh, could have done a buy trade at that support level for that asset to grow up because we have three prior verifications of that support level. So let's go back to the charts again. And, okay, basically what we're looking at here is the euro, US dollar. Forget all these colored lines down below because those are my support and resistance lines and my Fibonacci. But you can see the euro, US dollar. And it's trading in a very tight range right now. And the orange lines, you see where it says R2, R4, R3, R2, R1, and then pivot point line, then S1. It's... We have actually didn't have to do anything. We can drop them right on our chart by going back up here to indicator. And all we do is scroll down here to pivot point. Okay. And we want to put our pivot points on here. We just do our pivot point standard, or we can do our, our use a reversal strategy, a channel train strategy. But we're going to use just pivot point, just our pivot point standard. And click on it, and it's going to drop all your current support and resistance levels. Now, so we have, look at price. It's right here at the pivot point. Now, price has moved up to that R1 level. So we're expecting price to bounce off of that and come back down to the 
S to the pivot point level or break below to the S1 level. Okay. Now, we can see that that price level and that pivot point chart is completely accurate all the way back to here. So that asset has been staying there. Now, the euro, we also know, is moving to the top of its trading zone where it hasn't been trading in a long time. So it's holding that top. So that's telling us if it breaks down below, that, that resistance point does hold it. It's going to drop back down here somewhere. So we can enter a sell signal when it drops back below that resistance point and take our take profit point here at the pivot point and put our next our figure out where we'd have to put our our, our stop loss and it's setting up a beautiful trade for you because again when it came see down here where it bounced off the pivot point level here because we don't need to make this whole range of profit. When it came down here, it bounced off. It came up here. It bounced down. We would have made a several pips. Came back up, bounced off. That we would have made nice pips there. Now remember, you only want to trade with the trend. So you're not looking when it comes down here, it's guessing it's going to go back up. You're looking for it to hit that resistance level and bounce off of it, or find the support level and bounce off of that. Okay. And the more valid you have, and the more trading you've had in that zone the more accurate it is. And remember, with day trading, you're only looking to make a few pips. But you don't have to get all involved with all these other indicators. But look at this. When it hit that resistance line, bounced off of there, look at where volume was. Volume's the key other indicator. All those traders were selling off that asset. So let's go back to my PowerPoint and let's continue on real quickly. So we can again see here on the example chart, once you've identified these key support levels, you can use those to make trading decisions. Because remember, trades don't go straight up and down. They bounce off of levels. They find price points, historical price points, where the buyers have hemmed and hawed. When we can see the validity of a particular price point, okay, we can use that to make short-term trading decisions. So again here, this is New Zealand dollar. Okay, we've isolated tops and bottoms. Even though it's fairly wide, it really isn't. It goes from 077192 to 081067, okay, in a very short-term chart. Okay, so the main point of this lesson is simply you do not need a, a complicated and confusing trading strategy to find high profitable entries into the market. All you need is the ability to recognize price action trading strategies at key chart levels of horizontal support and resistance. If you just focus on this one strategy and really master it, you will be able to look at any chart of any market and find high probability price action trading opportunities. Now, strategy number three, moving average crossover strategy. This is one of the best strategies out there, especially for day trading, and one of the easiest. Okay. Moving average indicators are standard with all trading platforms. The indicators can be best set for the criteria. So you can decide. Some people use 50 and 100. Depends on when you're trading shorter periods, okay, you want to see what, you know, what works best for you. But for this simple trading strategy, we need three moving averages. One at 20 periods, one at 60 periods, and one at 100 periods. When the 20 period line is our fast moving average, the 60 point line is our slow moving average, and the 100 period line is our trend indicator. Okay. The day trend strategy requires a buy signal when the fast moving average, the 20 day moving average, crosses over the slower moving average, the 60 day. And a sell signal is generated when the fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average. And this is not very complicated. Okay. And you can put these easily on your charts by just clicking on moving averages, filling in the 20 and the 60. And you can add on a third one with the 100. And all you do is watch for those crossovers. It crosses under, crosses over. That's all. It, when it does, of course, you want to use volume to confirm. But it will give you great entry positions. Okay. How do I know if the price is beginning to trend? 
Well, if the price bars stay consistently above or below the 100 period line, the 100 period line is what gives us our trend verification, then you know a strong price trend is in force. The setting above can be altered to shorter periods, but will, it will generate more false signals. Okay, so the tried tested one is 206100. The settings I suggest would generate signals that will allow you to follow a trend if one begins without short without short price fluctuations violating the signal. Now you can adjust these all you want. You can make it a 25, a 65, and a 110. But it's not very complicated to do that, but you have to test them and you can go to use the CMS demo platform, test them all you want with those charts and see how they work and define them. So on this chart on the right, I have circled in green four separate signals that this moving average crossover system has generated on the euro US dollar daily charts in the last few months. Okay. And on each of these occasions, the system made 600, 200, 200, and 100 points respectively. I've also shown a red line where this trading technique has generated false signals. These periods where price is ranging rather than trending are when a signal will most likely be false. But if you look at volume, it would have stopped you from making those trades. So all you're doing is looking for when the short and the long cross over each other and in conjunction with the trading trend. Okay. Now the chart above shows the first positive signal in detail. And the fast moving average quickly down, dropped down over the slow moving average and that the trend moving average generated a signal. Notice how the price moved quickly away from the trend moving average and stayed below its signifying strength. So see the trend, the trend moving average is the black, and then you have the crossovers, and it gave you perfect trading opportunities. Okay. Then, of course, we also have scalping. And scalping is utilizes large position sizes for smaller price gains in the smallest time period of, hold, of holding time. It is performed interday. The main goal is to buy or sell a number of shares or assets at the bid or ask price and then quickly sell them a few cents higher or lower. As soon as you've covered your spread, whether you've made two extra points, four extra and get out of the trade. The holding times can vary from seconds to minutes and in some cases up to several hours. The position is closed before the end of the total market trading session. Session. Okay. Now, scalping is a very unique thing. Scalping is a fast-paced activity for the most nimble traders. It requires precision timing and execution. Scalpers use day trading buying power of four to one margin to maximize profits with the most shares in the shortest period of time. This requires focusing on smaller time frames, interval charts such as one minute and five minute candlestick charts. Momentum indicators such as stochastics, moving average convergence and divergence, and RSI are commonly used. Scalpers buy low and sell high or buy high and sell low. But the idea is to make short term quick profits and get out of the market. You can keep buying this one asset over and over, but you don't want to stay in there. Some of the most common mistakes that cal scalpers make are poor execution, poor strategy, and not taking stop losses or over leveraging or late entries. Okay. So we've talked about three main strategies and we added in scalping for you. You can learn all these. There's tons of information to learn on the internet, but it's making them your own that's important. Okay. So whether you're using pivot points, and support and resistance, whether you're using momentum day trading, whether you're using scalping, or whether you're using price action. There's tons of stuff, but do not read the stuff that is Bill Smith tells you how to successfully trade his version of, of momentum indicators. Read the real stuff. Look for the ones that give you charts and tests. Okay. Learn what makes up the strategy, not how they're going to tell you to get rich. Once you understand the strategy, then test it and modify it and make it your own. And this is how you'll find that you can be successful over the long term, especially day trading. But building your trading plan is your first step, then getting your strategies in there. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. And again, 
open a demo account with CMS Trader and try all of these out. You'll find that they're not that difficult. And you can have some fun along the way also because they're very exciting. Make sure you manage your risk at all times. Thank you very much and have a great trading week. And thank you for supporting CMS as well as investing.com. Have a good night now.